Good morning. By all accounts, the temple that Jesus was looking at there in Jerusalem was, was extremely impressive. Why does Jesus, why is he a big stick in the mud, and why does he talk about its destruction? Today we're looking at Mark chapter 13, and we're going to just take the first two verses. Here's what it says, Then as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. And you know, after this, the disciples were astonished. How could this be? Now, you've likely heard the story of the destruction of the temple in 70 A.D., the revolt had happened, and now the, here's General Titus with the Roman armies, and they come, and they break, eventually they break into the city. The people are there for Passover, so the city's just filled with people, filled to the brim, and uh, there's a lot of mayhem that ensues. But finally, they actually come, and, and we understand that Titus wanted to spare the temple, but he didn't do it. What happened was a soldier, soldiers came along, and the temple walls were lined with cedar and gold. I mean, it was, it was an extraordinary wonder of the world, and... Somehow, the Jews used fire to try to repel the Romans to keep them out. It wasn't the Romans that started, it was the Jews. But in any case, once the use of fire was going, why now the Romans had it? Somehow, somebody got the cedar inside the temple on fire, and the place went up, boom, very quickly. And what happened with all the, ma all the gold on the walls melted down, and the temple's made out of these big, giant stones that have been honed and perfected into these perfect shapes. But there were still cracks between the stones. And what happened, of course, to the gold as it melted? Of course, it went down into the cracks, the crevices and the cracks between the stones. It just dripped down there. And of course, you don't have to imagine too far what happened after this. Uh, it all the mayhem and uh, murder, and they said the blood just was running down the temple steps from the descriptions we have. It sounds terrible. But the gold melted down, and to get to the gold, uh, these giant stones, very, very heavy, these were lifted up one by one uh, to get all the gold out. And what Jesus said turned out to be true. Not one stone was left upon another. Now, this seems a gloomy point to dwell on, but Jesus does. Jesus talks about the destruction of the temple, and there's a lesson here for us. How much do we trust in our big buildings, in our mighty technology, in the giant things we're able to achieve. We, we t let's be honest, we tend to trust in, in all these things. We tend to trust in our stuff. But nothing that's human is very permanent. Once God withdraws his protection, it can all come to nothing, and it will come to nothing very quickly. Our biggest and best things that we build and our mighty technologies, once God removes his protection, it will be used, uh, not only will it be destroyed, but it may be used very much against us. You know, the devils have no mercy towards you. There's no negotiating. There's really no mercy they ultimately have. And so once God's protection is withdrawn, we're at the mercy of beings that are much stronger and much more crafty than we are. And so Jesus gives this extreme warning. And it's very important for us today because we feel like we're rich and increased with goods. We've got all this great, mighty technology. Hey, we've got air conditioning. We're making starships to go to Mars. Yeah, we've got it. Well, maybe we don't. We need to learn how to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where our hope is. We need to trust in His protection. And He will do for us that which we could never, ever, ever do for us ourselves. The, our best is so impermanent. God's best is permanent. So there's a lesson here for you and I. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, how easily we trust in the things that we make. We make these giant sandcastles, but then the, the water comes in and boom, it's gone. And so, Lord, uh, things that seem permanent to us are not lasting, but your things are always lasting. Help us to learn to direct our faith not to stuff, but to you, the creator of all. Please, Lord, be our God, be our guide, and help us to put our faith in you rather than trusting in our wonderful stuff. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. So think about it. What is there that you might be trusting in more than you should? Something to pray about today. If there's something that you're trusting in that you're overly trusting in, you should, God's, you're trusting God should be first, today's a day to talk to God about it and maybe straighten that out. Not maybe, but definitely straighten that out. Put your trust in God first. Have a wonderful day today following in the, in the steps and in the path that Jesus sets for you. God be with you.